Uh, oh, hello. Hi. I think that we can start. It's about uh, three past and past two and a half. So if I would see my screen, it would be also great. <laughs> then I can start. Start. Okay. Almost there. Almost there. You can see my my fancy screen now. But you should see this one. Hello, one more time. Uh, I'm Michal Michalczuk. I'm, I came here from Poland, from the north of Poland, from Gdańsk. And I want to talk to you about the, mm, the features, the new features uh, in mobile web browsers. And it's somehow the continuation of the speech uh, from today about PWA, but from the little bit different perspective. Uh, at the daily basis, I work uh, for my Dutch client, Stable Systems, on behalf of Cyclum, and I'm also the IT trainer. I train for Angular and .NET stuff mostly. But to, to my topic, you for sure know what uh, PWAs are. If you don't, I, I assume that you were today on the presentation. Who was? So you know, you know the whole theory behind it. I really like this quote that uh, PWA are user experience that have reached of the web. And it's really nice, um, nice set. And okay, what are the major points uh, according to the whole, whole documentation you can, can find that they should be reliable? Okay, so they have to work um, network independently as much as they can. So we have the server workers, service workers, sorry, it works fine. They should be fast, uh, so the client won't, won't see any, any glitch and so on and so on. So nice, we have still with workers for caching, uh, we have HTTP2, we have preloading strategies in browser, we have um, async script loading, a lot of the new cool stuff. Uh, plus we also have uh, such APIs as um, it's called Connection State API, which allows you to check what kind of connection is user currently using. And they should be engaging. This is the third uh, main, main point. So uh, they have to uh, engage the users to our, to our business. So they are installable, they are open in a full screen mode. And uh, this is the web manifest which we saw yesterday. And we have push notifications so we can use them for uh, for be responsive and user can uh, can see what's what's happening. But please do push notifications uh, responsible. Don't bloat user with it. So, uh, web or native? Where should we go? Uh, PWAs are not only about the mm, having native experience, but at some point there are actually about having the native experience. Uh, and it's a great idea to move into the PWA uh, and stop forcing users to download an app uh, which you will, would use once. The greatest example I saw lately was app from Ryanair. Then you can download an app, get to the plane, and order the food. Guess what? You're in the airplane. <laughs> and it's quite hard to connect to the network uh, when you're uh, a lot of feet above above your heads. Uh, but this is something which you would use once. Please don't force users to download your applications. Uh, but I know that business, uh, business heard that mobile apps are sexy. And this is the only way to engage users. Thankfully, not anymore. OK. Uh, but in the, the discussion about PWA versus native, uh, is it a re replacement or not? One point, in my opinion, is getting missed that the native apps have a lot of uh, device native functionalities. We can grab a video, we can use the sensors, uh, we can check the device uh, storage quota, we can check um, how many gigabytes of RAM does the device have. We can connect to other devices by Bluetooth, by NFC, whatever. And what about PWA? Uh, since you know, PWA is just a web. It's just a browser, so we have to find out what kind of new APIs we have in browser which supports those um, those stuff as um, peripherals as um, as quoting about 
system, operating system um, capacity. Okay. Just, it's just web, it's just browser. PWA is a fancy name. Okay, so PWA was my excuse for this presentation. Uh, now it's the main part. Uh, everything happens in, will happen in your mobile devices, so please connect to, to this website. Uh, if you could, I won't hurt to, I won't steal your data, I promise. I won't broke it also, the promise. <laughs> and that's also the point when I'm putting my pointer out and getting my mobile device, same as you. Uh, to my hand, okay? Okay, right now you should see something like this. Okay, uh, are everyone connected in? Cool, okay. Uh, so, here in my, in my hand I have the uh, administration application where I'd be controlling controlling the, the whole presentation. And here uh, I will show you some, some statistics. Here are the few few open browsers to uh, check out what's what's supported in them and what's not. Okay, so let's check few features which arrived to web lately. Let's start from the home screen. So what devices, uh, sorry, not devices, what browsers let you to install the, the manifest, because that's the point of it. Okay, and uh, as you can see, probably this part is using uh, Safari or just uh, iOS, because probably you know that even if you have Chrome on your iPhone, it's, it's still Safari <laughs> underneath. So, sorry guys, you're probably in this, in this part. Uh, on the right, on the right, uh, I've opened a few browsers. This one is Firefox, this one is Chrome, and this one is, uh, is Safari. Okay, so I hope that you get, you get the point uh, where it's going to. And we have 58 people. Nice. Okay. You know the drill, you know how the manifest looks like. I won't, I won't go into this, uh, into details. Okay, so let's check some nice features which are related to our devices. Something like screen orientation. Mm. Most of you who are not using iPhone <laughs> can see the results. If you, if you flip your phone, uh, you, will see, you will see the response right on your, on your screen. Yeah, it's an interactive session. You have to do it manually. Yes, if you have turned off the screen rotation, uh, it just won't, won't work. Will it show you that it has support or? Um, hmm. And what does it show to you? No, I, think that, I, I think that it will show support because I also have turned off uh, by default and it showed me support still. And it's nothing more than um, t -t 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 then an object in window. You have the, there the screen orientation, and you can subscribe to the event change there. Okay, so let's check something more. For example, network type speed. Sometimes it's nice to check what kind of networks your users are using, because if they're on the 2G, it's not the best idea to send them your fancy one megabyte pictures, right? Uh, or to download them your fancy bloat JS 3, 5, 10, whatever megabytes. And it's also something which you can uh, check natively from the browser. You just have to subscribe to the, uh, to the navigator connection change event. And you will find there what kind of connection type do you have and uh, efficiently what kind of Mm, what kind of connection type 
if there. Oh, okay. I will show here my my results from Chrome. Okay, maybe to to move around. Uh, let's check the what is this? The accelerometer. We have we have access to to a lot of sensors uh, in the browsers like accelerometer, like a gyroscope, and so on. So if you move your phone, you will see the real, um, the real data here. If you're not using iPhone, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, OK. OK, I hope that you, see the, that you see the results on the screens. Right, right? Yes. OK, cool. OK, and the accelerometer is the example of the new gener generic sensor API, um, which will, I hope, soon uh, be the same for all, all kind of sensors. Uh, all of them works the same. You create new object of, in this case, accelerometer. Then on it, you have the um, event called reading. And this is crazy. You don't use this uh, event. That how it was working previously. Sorry, I didn't change that. Uh, you have to read directly from from the accelerometer the values x, y, z, and then you have the then you have the um, the values. Same is for gyroscope. You can also move your phone and see the real uh, the real the real data, and also. It's an example of uh, generic sensor API. You can you can just uh, subscribe to the reading event out of it. But those are the new stuff. As you can see, not everywhere supported, especially on iPhone. Uh, but we have the older older API also. Mm. Oh, sorry, that one, device motion. And unless you're using probably desktop, I, I think that this is uh, mine, Safari on desktop. You can you can check uh, you can subscribe to event directly on the window called device motion, and you will get there all things, acceleration and rotation at the same time. If you see the values are constantly changing. They're really crazy. <laughs> I don't know how. Uh, for, I don't know why. Uh, but it, it really, really giving you the crazy results. Also, oops, not this one. This one, yeah. Also, we have the old API for device uh, device orientation, which we all also show you uh, in what dimensions your device currently is, and it's also. Uh, Firing the events like like crazy. Mm, they are still in usage, but the majority uh, of the standard of the standards is going to the new generic sensor API. Hmm? Uh, yeah, it should. But maybe you get to the good point. Check the browsers here. Uh, we have about three, 14, 15 browsers, and some of them are, for example, Facebook. So someone opened it from the link on, on Facebook. Uh, and they might be exotic. <laughs> we have Safari, Open Safari, uh, Mobile Safari UI on something WebKit. We have Samsung Internet, a lot of stuff. So they are not only free for, for, or for major browsers. The real world is this. Your users are using everything, in, including the built-in Facebook browser, which not always behave the same. OK. Uh, speaking about the sensor, speaking uh, about what we can use in our phone, this is my absolutely favorite API, the vibration. API. It works only if uh, if the event from the user, the real click event, will uh, will come to the 
will come to the browser, you cannot uh, ca fire it programmatically. It really has to be uh, from the user, thankfully, because by this API, you could, uh, you know, drain the battery out. Uh, the users. Is that like Programmatic? Yeah, I tried. Or maybe something changed <laughs> since I wrote this presentation. Mm -hmm. I know for sure there are some modalities that you can uh, turn the vibration off. Uh, programmatically? Yeah, programmatically. That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's really bad. Uh, okay, and by the way, do you recognize what melody does it vibrate? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's... Uh, 500, 110, 500, you know, <laughs> that's the, <laughs> that would, right, right? So that's the, that's the user usage you have on the navigator object, the navigate method, and you're just passing the array of, yeah? Can you define the vibration clock? One more time. Can you identify the vibration clock? No, 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 you can't, you can't, and, uh, you cannot be in non-vibration silent mode for this. Uh, it's still supported then. <laughs> it's still supported in the in the browser, and it's the Imperial March from the from the Star Wars. <laughs> so Darth Vader, yeah, yeah, good catch. Okay. Uh, also, also there are the peripheries which we can use, but we can also check what's in the phone. For example, what how many how many batteries percentage do you have? Kind of creepy, right? Uh, and this API, it's qu quite funny because the people who invented the standard thought that it would be nice if the uh, developers would block some highly battery draining operations if the user uh, has low low battery, but Actually, it was mostly used for uh, fingerprinting on the web. So this API is obsolete now. Uh, it's deprecated, and it will, will, will be removed. They had the good thought about it, but the web, the dark part of web, the advertisers and so on, did the job. Yeah, but you can still use it <laughs> for some time. OK, what else? maybe some fancy stuff like speech recognition, which is uh, the only feature from my list which is, not, which is not supported by any browser according to standard. Only Chrome now supports it, but it's a vendor-specific support. It's not the standard one. And you can also, also play it talk to it, and it should recognize the, uh, the speech. I recommend saying something in English to it. <laughs> yep. And this a API is actually pretty, pretty, pretty huge. Uh, I would create a separate talk for it, so don't go into, into details. Uh, this, what you see on the screen is really the easiest one trick. Okay. Hmm. What else? What else? What else? What else? The I, I don't know if you're familiar with with the uh, the whole web VR movement. I'm so so, <laughs> uh, but I know that there is the Gamepad API, which is part of this uh, of this uh, specification of the web web VR for some reason, and. You can check all the connected gamepads into your uh, device, whatever device, it, it could be laptop, computer, it could be your, your phone, and then you can subscribe to button presses uh, to check what are the access position and are you even connected. And why not, you can play on the gamepad, uh, bind the gamepad in game, in browser. And how would you connect the gamepad? Maybe by Bluetooth. 
Why not? Uh, Chrome supports it, <laughs> mostly Chrome, mm, and it's actually pretty, pretty easy to, to use. We have the Bluetooth object on the navigator, we're requesting the device, and we're claiming what kind of services we want to use. In this example, I want to use the battery service to check uh, how many, how many uh, battery have my, I don't know, headphones or whatever, or my gamepad, which I connect to my phone. Why not? So it, it's also quite, uh, quite easy to use API. Okay, so if we co can connect by Bluetooth, maybe NFC? Not quite, <laughs> not quite. Uh, unfortunately, um, this is still still processing. Uh, non main vendor, non vendor at all. Uh, in this sample of this conference, uh, actually um, plugged it in into his uh, browser. Okay. So maybe something which would be also awesome to work, like the ambient light sensor. You know that ambient line sensor which you have on the top of your phone, uh, which will check if it's covered or not. Okay, maybe not mine. <laughs> uh, and it also, if you remember, uh, the generic sensor API is also an example of the generic sen sensor API. It should also react to the reading event and you have the illuminance there from zero to one. Nice to have, still not implemented. Okay, so something which all of you should use, almost, the camera. <laughs> Why not? I'm not grabbing images from those cameras. You can safely turn them on. <laughs> and it's also pretty easy to, to use it. You have the media devices on the navigator. You're requesting for video and you have the stream. And that's all. That, that's a good question. I have more than one camera, and it always uses the front one. Exactly. Uh, how to get to the second one? I don't know. <laughs> uh, here, in the constraints, said the, probably you, you have to put in the constraints what kind of uh, video you, you're requesting. I won't tell you, I don't know. <laughs> Let's be honest. Okay. Um, okay. We have also uh, stuff like, are you online? Uh, all, all major brother, brothers thankfully support that, which is also nice because uh, we can turn off some communication if the user goes, goes offline. Uh, fine for me. And of course, in, in the end, we, we have the fabulous push API and the notification API. So pr probably at the moment, all of your phones are popped out with the notification. And last but not least, uh, there is something like share API, which uh, will allow you to, as in Android devices, you know all the Share button. Share something, and you're getting the native, native uh, button with share. You can do it in, in the browser also. You have the navigator start, sorry, not that. You have the navigator share, and here you're putting the text title and the URL. And if you would to put the, there the image, you can also do it. Why not? So you can share that you're my, on my speech uh, on Twitter. It wouldn't be bad. <laughs> And there was something like the indents. It was working only on Chrome, only or, uh, on Android devices. Uh, it was in navigator.start activity new indent, but it totally died. It was partially, uh, partially only by Chrome supported. So thankfully it died. This new navigation share, I hope will stay with us because it's a pretty, pretty cool feature. Okay, I think that I drained all, 
all my main main points. We can check the short summary. Uh, so you can check on your phone what features was supported in your in your browser. This is mine. Uh, this is mine desktop Chrome. And let's check the short summary of it. It might take a while. Okay, yeah, cool. Okay, so we have 94 tenders, nice. Uh, most of you was on the Android devices, some of you on the iOS. Mac OS is probably me and maybe someone else. <laughs> okay, uh, as you can see, majority uh, of browsers is Chrome Mobile, so and a lot of a lot of other uh, versions of Chrome, like just Chrome, probably from the desktop, like the Chrome Mobile Web View. I don't know. <laughs> Chrome Mobile OS. Okay, we know what it's about. Uh, mobile Safari, Samsung Internet, Facebook, uh, Firefox on Firefox on iOS. So a lot, a lot. Okay, and the features which we tested uh, from the top to the bottom, most of it, in most of it, the red ones are iOS. Uh, but not always, of course, the camera, the device motion, the iOS, thankfully, thankfully support, right? But a lot of APIs which uh, can read, oh, run device memory, I forgot about it. That's also pretty cool and pretty creepy, right? That you can, that I, I can check how many, how many uh, RAM you have in, in your, uh, in your device. But the funny thing is, Eight is a limit. <laughs> I don't know why, but eight is a limit. I have 60, 16 megabytes here. Eight is a limit. <laughs> I don't know the reason. <laughs> okay. 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 I will leave you with that. You will also have have the same uh, the same results in your in your browsers. And let me just jump to my presentation for the for the last a few minutes. You might ask, is it safe? Because uh, my web page reads a lot of information about you, about your devices, about your RAM, about your storage quota. That, that's also nice. I forget about it. But a lot of sensible information. And is it safe? Well, most of those most of those APIs work, works only if you're on HTTPS connection. If you're on HTTP, they simply won't work. They will be available, but they just won't work, which is nice. Uh, because if your data will read to someone, then only to this one website, not the others, <laughs> not the others in the middle. Uh, which is nice, and if you would like to find more, there is the website made by my friend uh, Adam Barr called What Web Can Do Today. Adam has examples of all more or less exotic APIs, APIs which you can find in the browsers. Check it, it's really nice, nice project. And if I can sum it up, uh, I think that in my opinion with all those features, that you that you saw and uh, many others which I don't know or didn't mention, um, the access to modern browsers is really uh, getting getting very very rich and I hope that a lot of companies uh, who now forces native devices for the reason that they support they support um, sensors for example might might think about moving into, into uh, web with using PWA. Techniques. So maybe it would be a moment when we have one support to rule all, just the web and all the web. Uh, 
pros and cons, of course. And I hope that it won't be only Chrome. I hope that uh, Safari, that iOS will also also uh, implement all of those APIs. And I know that there is a survey on the web page of the Vox Days frontend. So please give me a feedback. Feedback is something which speakers uh, feed. <laughs> so please do it. Uh, and thank you very much. Here you can find the link to the, to the presentation with all the links, all the links inside. Here you have also link for the repository when you can find uh, the whole application we just played with. Uh, I've made it about a year ago. Some parts might parts might, might not, not be the the fresh technologies, but worth to check. Maybe I will update it someday. And thank you very much. I hope we have time for some questions. Nope, nope. Okay, thank you very much then.